So Martin, thanks for taking the time to do this interview with us. We're a few weeks off the end of the season now. How did the campaign go for you personally? Um, it was good. It was um, the first 12 months in full-time coaching, um, which uh, I thoroughly enjoyed. A lot of challenges that I didn't think I'd have to face, um, a lot of new experiences. Um, but overall, it's been, you know, it's been a very beneficial year for myself, getting to know everybody at the club and, and how it works, and I'm looking forward to the future. Obviously, we're now into the, as well as you class, the off-season. A lot of people use that opportunity to get a bit of R&R, but also do your preparations for the new campaign. Do you have any plans for this kind of summer off-season, I guess? Um, to be honest, uh, <clears throat> so I had, a, I had an operation on my knee um, two or three weeks ago now. Um, got that out of the way and we're, we're back at it. Um, you know, there's not many, not many coaches out of the building. They're still in the building. We're still working hard and reflecting on, on what's happened last season. Um, learning what we can from that and, and starting to put the plans in, in, in place for, for what hopes to be a, a successful here next year. And I guess some sports might not know, obviously you mentioned they're working with the club last season, but your links to the club go further back than that. Obviously the previous season before that you were you were involved in the academy setup as well. Yeah, um, it's about two and a half years that I've been with the club now um, on a part-time basis and a full-time basis. Um, as I said, the first 12 months as a full-time uh, member of staff and um, I feel like you know in the last two and a half years I've gained a little bit more clarity on how the club wants to wants to work and and what the owners are after and how everybody in the building works and um, as I said it's it's been very enjoyable and, and enlightening to be honest. And a new role for yourself for next season? Could you possibly explain what that entail? Yeah, um, <clears throat> so day to day responsibilities will be to work with uh, work closely with the, the under 18s lead coach. Um, Michael Collins, who, who was an excellent coach and, and very easy to work with, um, and support him and, and work with him um, to try and develop those under 18s and the players between 16 to 20 years old. Um, in turn, I'll, I'll be supporting the, the new head coach um, in any way that, that, that he feels that is necessary, and hopefully making him aware of, of the players within the club that have got talent that you know we may feel has got the potential to, to push on and, and, and get into that first team. Um, Alongside those responsibilities, uh, it'll be for me to, to understand who else is in the programme right the way down to the bottom in terms of players um, and making sure that the first, even the first team head coach is, is fully aware of those talents and, and, and the process that they're all going through and, and where they're at with their development. So, so there's a lot of things to do, but um, you know, it's exciting. Look forward to it. Yeah, you mentioned that there's a development role, I guess, from the very top to the bottom, the under eight through to the under 18s and beyond that. As you say, there must be a role that really whets your appetite and, and excites you ahead of the new campaign? No, it's great. Um, you know, I've got a real passion for developing footballers uh, and developing people and, and the fact that I've got access to so many different age groups um, is it, it's great for, for my own development um, and, and hopefully that I can, I can help these players in, in the very best way possible. And we've mentioned already, you, obviously, your involvement in the other teams last season, previous links with the academy as well. That must help going into this new role next season. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, I think it takes time for you to get to know the players in terms of um, their characters, uh, and, and I've had twelve months of that now, uh, along with along with Michael and another coach in the building. Um, and you know, that'll help us moving forward. Um, we've you know we've recruited some players that are joining the under 18s this season. That I think it's probably a representation of the work being done behind the scenes. Um, players from, from you know from good clubs, Manchester United, uh, Huddersfield, uh, Leeds United, good players that. They've been attracted to come and sign for us here at Bradford, so we look forward to working with those and, and hopefully maximising their, their potential and, and trying to push them into that first team when we can. You mentioned there Michael Collins, obviously among others, in the coaching setup at the club at the moment. Does that help the fact that you know the team of coaches that you're going to be working with next season? Yeah, without a shadow of a doubt. Um, you know, football it's a, it's a tough industry, but you know when you've got good people around you, um, it makes it a lot a lot easier. And a lot more effective. Um, there's some good coaches in this club. There's some good people in this club, um, and you know I'm I'm looking forward to continuing working with them and you know becoming more cohesive working working with them moving forward. So it'll be good. And how important is it to have chairmen that are so clearly supportive of having this sort of pathway? I guess from from right at the bottom end of the, of the youth level all the way up to the first team. Personally, I think it's I think it's very good. Um, I think it's quite rare. Um, don't get me wrong, it's challenging. Um, you know, is a demanding uh, owner and, and chairman, um, but we, you know, it, it, we had a, we had an induction quite recently for our for our new under 18s next season, and 
you know, as soon as Edin found out about the induction, he wanted to be a part of it and he wanted to offer his support to, to the players, to the parents, um, and shows a keen interest in that. Uh, and I think that, you know, that goes without saying that that's quite rare. Um, again, last night, I'm led to believe there was an under eight, an under eights induction evening for, um, for seven and eight year olds where, again, the owner wants to be a part of that. Can I be there? Can I meet the parents? And I think that goes a long way. And I think people, people you know, they appreciate that. Um, I think it's quite commendable. So it's just becoming a lot more, um, more like, a, like a family environment um, in terms of the, the staff and the players and getting that culture really strong within the, within the club. We mentioned that clear link, I guess, through the age groups into the youth setup and hopefully eventually into the first team environment. That's perhaps different to the way that a lot of clubs will do it around the divisions, around the country. But how important is that? You know, you're looking at younger players, they can see that clear pathway up to the top potentially. Well, I think it's very good, and I think um, <clears throat> I think the attraction of, of Bradford City is only growing uh, for young players and parents. Um, you know, I think people want to want to come and be a part of that, and and they appreciate the work that, that's been done and the pathway that's been created. Um, I think the easiest part is getting players into the first team. I don't think that's a difficult thing. Um, the, the difficulty and the challenge will be for us to to make sure that if we can get young lads in that first team, not only do we get them there, but we can keep them there. Um, and they can excel, um, and it's not just a, a, you know one one or two appearances, but actually they get in there, they do well, um, and they actually add value and strength to the group as well. Not just because they're young, but can they actually add value, learn from all the players, and and as I say, once they're in there, make sure that they're, they're consistent and they can stay in there and hopefully kick on even further. You talk about the, the setup, the pathway, obviously from the from youth group to the first team. That must be make the club an even more attractive prospect to maybe younger players when they're, they're looking potentially to come to the club. No, definitely. Um, you know, as I said before, I think um, you know representation of that work and the players that are, that we're recruiting at the moment. More and more players, I, I believe, uh, are seeing that there is a vision here, and uh, and we are trying to create that pathway for players to get into the first team as as early as possible, but of course at the right time uh, to give them the best chance to develop and, and to grow, um, and to as I said, to excel and succeed, and, and whether that's with Bradford City or even higher. Um, you know, there's, there's definitely an attraction there, I think, from people seeing from the outside that actually this is a club where I might have a real chance of getting through if, if I come and, and do what's asked and work with, play, uh, with with people there and it's going to give me a great opportunity to have a career. And I guess that must work in our favour when we're trying to attract younger players, potentially among teams that are maybe higher up in, in the football divisions than we are currently at the moment. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, there's some very good football clubs in this area and the competition between clubs is only growing stronger and um, full respect for everything that everybody else is doing. Um, we perhaps can't compete with others on, on facilities and, and funding, um, but I think the people that we have at the club now, not just coaches, but everybody at the club, we're creating something that hopefully does attract these young players um, and the pathway that we talk about that they might think, you know what, maybe, maybe Bradford's the right place for me to be at for my development. It might sound obvious, I guess, but how important is coaching? How important is it to nurture players of different ages and give them the room to grow and the room to, to get better, potentially, at least? Uh, for me, it's massive. Uh, I think back to when I was when I was young and I was at, at professional clubs and um, I've got some really good memories, but I'm not convinced that I, I was given enough. And that's not a critique of anybody, but I just, whether that was me at the time, I don't know, but I just didn't feel I was guided enough. Um, and educated enough on, on the game and sort of roles and responsibilities and not just football but as a person, you know, being developed as a person and being ready for this, this world of football. Um, so I think, it's, I think it's huge, you know, I think ultimately players play a massive part but if we as coaches, you know, we can nurture them and we can help them and guide them in the right way um, then hopefully we can create some really good potential full-time professional footballers. You mentioned there your, your own personal time in the youth setups, I'm going to write to the likes of Sheffield United, Doncaster, Rotherham. Can you use your experiences of being in those youth set setups at professional clubs and kind of bring it into this role where you kind of know what young players might need and what they might require for their development? Um, yeah, I'd, li I'd like to think so. Um, I'd like to think so. I think um, certainly one of my drives would be not fulfilling, um, you know, fulfilling the, the career that I really wanted um, and sort of maybe the failings as such, uh, you know, drives me on to try and help these players and, and give them what I feel that I might have missed out on. Um, so definitely having that experience, but at the same time there's some players that have, that have, have had 
brilliant careers um, and, and our coaches within the clubs who have got that such experience have been in clubs that they can add such value to these players as well so I think people with past experiences playing not playing um, it's people you're dealing with people they're not just footballers they're people um, and, and you know for us we try and we try and guide them in the best way possible and utilize everybody in the building regardless of, of background and whoever's got skill sets to help these players then we will utilize that in any way we can